My name is Harry Jacobs, and I am the North of 60 Gaming, and welcome today. And today we're going to be looking at Aventuria. And this is a world that is similar to magic, I would almost say. If magic had a baby with a game like Heroes of Terranoff from FFG, we would probably get this game. Each character has a pre-made deck. We use cards that we discard in order to give us endurance as opposed to mana and then you will use your ma your endurance cards to trigger effects from other cards bit of a cross with uh, uh, marvel champions as well aventuria has you pitted against another player in the dual mode or what it's really good for is the adventure mode where you take on little stories of and take uh, narratives that end in tests and at the end of all these tests and narratives, you fight the big boss battle a la magic style, tossing spells, using weapons, and the monsters fight back in a predetermined way. So let's get down, take a look at what's in the box, get it set up, and get playing and teach you some of the rules. As you can see, I've already taken off the shrimp wrap, and in fact, I made, I did a unboxing of this game but i don't know where that video went i think i deleted it like a twit i am so we are going to just start with the storage so i've already been through this game i have organized it i have put things in sleeves and we're just going to take a quick look at the components and just give you an idea of what's in the box and how i stored it before we set this up and play the game this game isn't a hard game though the rules are coming to i'll show you the rules in just a second so this is the box it's by lucas zach and michael palm this is the Dark Eye. Now, Adventuria seems to be a role-playing game as well. There's a lot of material out on this particular game uh, from this particular world, as well as there's a ton of expansions. And I've got some of these expansions coming in over the next little while. Uh, it took a while to find them. This game's been out for a few years. I think it was a Kickstarter campaign about four or five years ago. Uh, very hard to find the stuff. Uh, thanks to Noble Knights, I was able to get most of everything I needed. I uh, got some stuff off of 401 Games, and that's where I've got this from. I don't know how much left it is at Noble Knights because I've got some of the last copies of some of the things that were going on. I have got the rules on top. That's pretty traditional. This You start with the dual rules. The dual rules are basically very magic-like, in which you have two decks of cards. You take uh, your wizard fighter and the opponent takes his wizard fighter the first thing you do is you're going to pick up two cards you're going to put down anywhere from zero to two cards for endurance and then you're going to start basically laying cards down some are instances some you have to tap some are permanents very very magic like so if you play magic the gathering this would be a great adventure style magic the gathering type game in my opinion of course, I know people will say, oh my God, horror, is he comparing something to Magic the Gathering? Well, that's just the way it is. Now, the only thing I will say about this, and this is the mat, you do not have to use it, but it helps you keep it straight. I think for the cost, uh, they could have put this on a board. And if they do reprint this game, either they should include it as a neoprene mat or mount the damn thing. I mean... I would have paid an extra four or five bucks to have this mounted. Uh, I, I It might wear out, it may not. Um, but basically, there's the different areas. There's the adventure cards that tell you the story. There's leaders. There's where your bosses go. There's where your henchmen go. And you're going to fight the henchmen. Th there's demons, uh, depending on the scenario. Now, this on top here is the adventure book. It comes with two short adventures and one three-part adventure. The short adventure is meant to be played in about an hour where you can play the longer campaign style in probably two to three hours. Um, so that's in this book here along with the adventure rules as opposed to just the dual rules. You can see there is a big world here and there is quite a bit out there in terms of hardcover books much like D&D. So, but this gives you some of the background of the world that you're going to be working in though uh, it is very limited to this particular card game. I think it was almost meant to be a collectible card game. There is an element, if you add expansions, that you can actually build your own deck, so you can make stronger decks, use different things for your warrior mage, but I think that the pre-made decks probably work pretty well. 
Now these are the dice that come with it. Pretty pretty standard. There's a D6 and a D20. A little bit different. The D1 is the critical success, and the D20 is a critical failure. Uh, basically, what you have to do is you have to be lower in the test value, and then often you would have to roll a D6 to figure out what the damage is. Uh, a change from the uh, original, uh, which came with card markers, if you've ever had uh, uh, Heroes Realm, where you have card counters, this actually, ha they have spinning counters now. Not exactly the best quality. They're pretty nice, but they, they do kind of shake around, not as tight as they could be. And, uh, and it gives you, of course, all the, the, the playing characters that are available in this world, of which I have four of. You can see I've sorted out with the uh, counters. I've got all the counters for the for the adventurers, and you can see they're all here. Only four of which are in this particular game. Uh, they add a fifth in the Ship of Souls expansion, which is just off to that side. We have our our counters. These are doom. I think I think they're doom counters or some sort of counters that you play stories, kind of like Clue on the uh, Arkham Horror series, where you put these on a board and then you remove them, and then when they're all removed, some something will happen uh, on the narrative of the story. You can see right in here, there's the uh, counters for blood or health counters. And here are the timer counters. So these are your time counters, and each counter is each adventure has a set time and then there's events that happen much like Andor when you pass a certain phase of the game you are going to trigger uh, an event or a narrative event these are fate tokens so if you miss tests and things you can get a fate token which will allow you to reroll dice and a few other things this is a basic player you can see this is the dwarf he comes with 30 cards and you can see the counter card on the bottom the rules for the adventure is slightly different than the uh, than the main the main game, and we're going to take look or cl closer looks at the components as we set the game up eventually. These are our henchmen. There is our henchmen decks. So this was a throw and forget uh, storage solution, uh, typical of a lot of fantasy flight games where we just say, "Here's the stuff. Here's some bags," and actually they didn't even include bags. These are geek boxes. Literally, it was uh, some four, four or five decks with a sheet of counters and the rules and the dice all thrown in a box. Not hardly the way I like my games, but I mean, it should be pretty simple to go the way I have it set up now, but I really prefer a little nicer. I've seen far more, far better quality quality of life storage solutions and games at the same price with more or less the same components. But that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. So we're going to get down to the table. We're going to set it up, go through some rules. We're going to eventually play this game. We are going to play the adventure game, even though it suggests that uh, you play the duel first. But, you know, being a solo player, the only person I'm going to duel is myself. And really, it takes to come to surprise away when you're playing two-handed. Um, so we're going to play it solo, so let's get at it. So we are down at the table here for Adventuria, and we are going to be playing the short adventure, Saving Sylvana. So we are ready to go. Now there's some cards up here that we will talk about once we set up into the main game when we have to actually do the big boss fight. But for now, we have some narrative, then we're going to take some tests. So once all the tests are complete, we are going to fight the boss mob. And you can see Sylvana there, and we'll explain that fight as we get to it. Well, how we're going to do our tests is the pretty simple way. We have our two characters. We have Arbosh, son of Agrax, and Mirahaban Alaharama, and she is our... Fire, it looks like a fire mage versus our fighter. And you can see they have their starting tokens or their turn tokens on here. Now, there is a slight difference between this and the dual game. Here we have our test. So if we look at um, our test, you can see there are a number of types of attributes that we will test our skills against. And 
testing is no more than just rolling a d20 and then being lower or equal to that d20 roll. And this is, of course, and this, of course, is Arabash. And you can see he has his skills and attributes. We'll explain more about their, their skills and attributes in terms of the tests that they do when we start going into the combat. And we will set up the board. We have our fate tokens. You can see that the player mat is done. But this is all we really need to do, do to get started. So we're going to start. I'm going to read the narrative. We're going to roll some dice. Good things or bad things are going to happen. And then we're going to have the boss fight. Havana in the year 993 BF. Your friend Eric has asked you to help him rescue his friend Sylvana, who has been abducted by vicious pirates. He shows you some tracks that leads down a ladder into a system of subterranean cellars. As you prepare to head in, Elric suddenly remembers that he has another urgent matter to attend to. He says a hasty goodbye before you even make it far enough to kick in the first door. When you burst through the door, you stare into a wrinkled face of a blue-skinned kobold in a bright yellow loincloth who is talking to a group of goblins. The kobold yells at the goblins, Go get them! and quickly turns himself invisible. The goblins look at each unsurely and take flight. Quickly, you try to intercept them. So the first test we have to make is a body control test. And our fire mage has a value of 8. And our bodily control of our dwarf, Arbosh, is 10. So the fire mage is going to roll the dice. And he rolls a 16, which is a failure. On this failure roll, we are going to add a cowardly goblin to our fight. Next, we are going to roll our dwarf. He has a 10, and he rolls a 20. 20, of course, if we're having combat, would be a critical failure. But in this case, again, we're going to add another kobold to the test. And that is the first test. You venture into the depths of the dungeon. The racket must have startled the other denizens because you don't see another soul. You discover abandoned quarters and a row of jail cells that turn out to be empty apart from the crumbling skeleton of an unfortunate former inmate. So we have our next test, which is a perception test. Each of our two heroes are 10. So we're going to start out with our fire mage. Let's hope for a critical success, which is a 1. We rolled a 16. And that is a failure. No effect. We are going to roll for our dwarf. Whoops, we're going to roll for our dwarf. Who rolls a 6, which is a success. And the Sussex says, you find a secret tunnel. This will provide you an advantage over your quarry. At the beginning of the following combat, each hero may draw an additional card. As a reminder, each hero should now draw an action card and place it face down in front of you. So we will take that card. And we, have, we are ready to go. You look everywhere, but you cannot find any trace of Savannah or her captors. The only thing that catches your eye is a big mural covering one of the walls. Behind it, you can make out faint noises, as if there was a secret room. One of you should take a closer look. And here we are on the last test. It is a knowledge test. I would expect the fire mage to be pretty good at that. The, she is a fort and the dwarf is a 10 so the dwarf tends to be pretty average on everything we will roll our mage first the rage rolls a 11 which is a success 
After searching for a while, you find a door mechanism that opens a secret door. Without wasting any more time, you open the door and storm towards your upsetting foe. Only one hero has to make that test. The fire mage made that test. We are now ready to start the battle. We have surprised them. Woohoo! So let's go and go down onto the board and let's get this game ready to rock and roll. Just a quick note that on the perception test, only one character should have rolled. Both of these had a 10. Uh, since I rolled the Fire Mage first, I failed here. I returned the card to the top of my uh, deck here. So I don't get that extra card. Just uh, I, I thought I'd throw that in here. So at this point, we are going to start our adventure here. So the first thing I did was uh, I put a time counter here. We get eight turns. I am playing on the easy mode. I They give you these nice time counters, but I'm also going to use a dice because when it ticks down to five, we're going to add another henchman. This is going to be far easier to track than taking it off and going, well, is this five or not? Second of all, uh, we have our um, story, which basically is going to say, I have to guess his name. Down here, I have to guess six times correctly. You can see the party times three. There is two of us in the party. So it's going to take six guesses. And it's either going to be a craft, knowledge, or persuade. So craft is pretty good. 14 for a dwarf. And knowledge for 14 for a fire mage. And that will be a, a, an endurance test. They will use one endurance. So you can test once per turn, uh, among other things. Uh, we'll explain combat as we go a little bit more. But right now, we're just setting up. One of the things that we are setting up, of course, is our fate tokens. Every time you miss, you can take a fate token. Every time you kill a henchman or a boss monster, you're going to get a fate token. We have our life tokens here. And our timer tokens are here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put our henchmen out. So what we're going to do, of course, is start with our cowardly goblins. And they're automatically in because we lost that fight. So there are two of them here. Yay! So the stack is decked. Now, the way the rules read is that I'm going to have 10 points of, uh, what do they call it? Threat value. So I'm going to have a 10 of threat value. If you look at the monsters, and we'll bring one of these monsters up real close, right up here is the threat value. So that is a 5. This is his health at 15. This is his dodge value. So it's possible that he might dodge. In this case, he doesn't have a dodge value. He has a shield of 3. That means I... Anytime I'm going to attack him, he's going to subtract three. And the last one is his dodge roll. So in other words, he'd have to roll a one to dodge. I think I got that right. So looking at one of the monsters, we have a orc highwayman. You can see up here is his threat value, which is a five. Don't mind me as I move my glasses back and forth. His life is 15. He has no dodge, so we're going to basically hit him. He can't dodge away. He has an armor of 3, which makes him a little harder to hit because we subtract 3 from our damage. And, of course, this is a, an event marker that says basically every turn he's going to attack us. And that's basically how these cards go. So what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle, and we're going to look for 10... You saw it here, folks. I dropped them. So we're going to look for 10, a value of 10. So the first one we're going to draw is a value of 5. There's your Orc Highwayman. And we're going to put our Orc Highwayman here. He has a life total of 15. We're going to do the next one. It is Basil the Red. He has a value of 6. He has 18 life. No dodge. He has only one shield and a one event. So every event he's going to attack us. And we're also going to throw in our two. Our two cowardly goblins. 
And then what we're going to do is give them their life. We'll put our henchmen over here because we may be drawing more henchmen. And so we have 15, 5, 5, 5. And we need two more ones. And that is the start of the setup. We have our markers, which we're going to just set up to uh, 40. These are not the best markers, uh, these markers, because they, they tend to be a little loose. So I'm a little bit worried about them, but you can see I've set it to 40. And we'll just put that over here. We'll try not to move it around too much. We'll set ours up to 40 as well. There we go. And then we'll describe how we go along. But basically, they have the same type of thing. We have a dodge value of 5 here. And we have a dodge value of 5. Anytime they dodge, it halves the value of the damage rounding up. Okay. And then we start off with our attacks. So uh, the Fire Mage is very weak in melee at 6. Uh, not so good at range at 8. And of course, really good at combat at 14. Of course, um, our dwarf has no magic whatsoever, but it's good at uh, swords and stuff, and you can smack with a 14 and uh, range with 10. They have an inherent basic knife attack, as does the fire mage, has a basic attack, costing one endurance and you tap the car. And they both have a special feat that they can do once per turn. In which case, uh, he can actually do damage up to 5, and then he turns the card over. And then again, you can see that he doesn't have a special ability there. The mage here can at, at one time shuffle the two cards from their discard back to their deck. Once the cards are discarded, they are gone. Unless there's a way, of course, of bringing them back into your hand from the discard pile. So just be aware of that when you're playing the game. Other than that, this game is very similar to uh, Magic the Gathering. And we will... The, 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 the major difference is, is that we don't have mana in the traditional sense. We have endurance. The way we play endurance is we're going to each turn in the preparation phase decide we're going to pick up two cards. Then we're going to decide to lay down zero, one, or two cards for endurance. And then we're going to play cards. So the first round or two, we're just going to get smacked. Uh, Sava, the Cobalt, who we do not know, who has three syllables, six syllables in his name, is going to hurt us and smack us every turn. And these guys are going to smack us and hurt us every turn until we build up some strength to where, where we can start attacking. So generally that occurs very quickly, except that we're going to need about six or seven endurance by the time we do that. We have 30 cards, of which 6 or 7 are going to wind up endurance, which means that we're not going to have those cards. So we're going to have to make some hard choices to decide what are going to be used for endurance and what we're going to go after. So it's going to make for an interesting game. Basically, we will sp spend an endurance, tap a card, much like you would do a mana, and tap a card to attack. And that is the way it goes. The AI is programmed. So if we look at, we'll just bring up a henchman. Uh, just for the sake of it, you can see this is a swashbuckler, but you can see on the different rolls, 1 to 4 in this particular one, 5 to 10, 11 to 16, and 17 to 20. So he's going to roll a 20-sided dice, and then depending on the roll, they are going to roll for a combat. And so that is basically how the game is played. Very, very quick. I think once we get through it, I think you'll have a total understanding there are plenty of adventures. There's too, too many adventures in a campaign. I have at least two expansions to give you more mini games, more campaigns, not to mention a game that just gives you more heroes and more stuff. So, you know, I this is my type of game. I, I've, if Magic the Gathering could do something like this for a solo game, I think that it would make a decent solo game. So... Uh, you heard me say it, this is similar to Magic, not quite, but if you play Magic, I think this is pretty much the do-it-yourself adventure, very quick, as you saw. So, let's get to playing.
Okay, so we are ready to play. We are set up with our Fire Mage as our first player. We've dealt out five cards earlier on in this game. We have put out all our henchmen. And there is our Cobalt. We don't know his name yet. We have to remove six tokens. So the first thing is the preparation phase. Now this all happens simultaneously. So they will both take two cards. And both of them will lay down either zero, one, or two cards for Endurance. So the Fire Mage has decided to move these two cards into her Endurance pile. We'll just put that over here. Our Dwarf is going to take his top two cards. I've already looked at them. It's just for expedience. I did that off camera just to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to watch me decide what they need to do. Next up is we start. We've done our preparation. We would uh, untap cards. Uh, at this point in time, what we would do is now start playing cards using our Endurance. And the first thing that uh, our mage is going to do is going to use both Endurance to actually play Magical Aptitude. And this adds two to her hero's magic tests. And we just put that card right there. And now anytime she tests her magic, she needs 16 or less. The first few rounds, as you can gather, are all about sort of building up Endurance and, and getting a few things out. The Dwarf is going to tap one to play out his carousing. You really can't do much at this point, so he's going to take a guess. You can guess once per turn. So he's going to roll a d6, and it's a 14 and up of his crafting. Why he sings, he crafts, and makes beer and whatnot, and he has rolled a 2, which means we've removed our first red gem. There are 5 left. That is the entire turn that he will take. Then what happens is it is our uh, monster turn. We will start from our Cobalt Leader and go through the Henchman. And each one will get a single turn over here. He will get a double turn. So let's roll the dice and see what uh, the, the Leader is going to do. And we can't attack him yet until he actually, we actually get all those removed. So let's roll high. Let's roll high. We have rolled an 8. An 8 says, Heat Weapon. The hero with the most fate must select one of the weapons in play and put it back in their hand or lose D6 if they have no weapons in play or nothing happens. So what's going to happen is he's heated a weapon up. I don't have any weapons. So somebody's going to have to take... Uh, this is our tank. So two tanks are supposed to sop up damage. Let's not hope for a natural 12 here. So he is going to lose eight damage right off the top. Oh my gosh. Then we're going to roll the dice again. It is a seven. It is a heat weapon again. The hero with the most fate. So it doesn't... Um, Weapons in play. If they have no weapons, nothing happens. Well, oh, if, wait a minute. Oh, nothing happens. Never mind. So, sorry. So, he doesn't have any fate and he doesn't have any weapons. So, there is no negative effects on both sides, which is excellent. So, that is Heat Weapon. I am sorry. Uh, not totally familiar with this game. Um, I did have a little practice run through. But apparently mistakes still are going on. So first we're going to go use our Orc Highwayman. He's going to roll a 15. A 15 says nothing. He shouts an Orc curse. We go over to our Pirate. He rolls an 8. Attack a random hero. Suffers 1 die plus 3. So we're going to roll a dice. 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. So it's a 3. Right there. It's a three, so we're going to take a one die plus three damage. So it's a one, so she, she takes four damage. She has no protection, so she is going to go from 40 to 36. That is our fire mage. Then we're going to do our two cowardly goblins. He rolls a 12, which is nothing. Only on one through six is the cowardly go goblin going to hit. That's a seven, does nothing. So we are now ready to move on to the next turn. We will take this down to turn seven. At turn five, we're going to add another henchman. So everything is going to untap. We are all going to select two more cards. 
And then we're going to decide what cards to discard or, or put into our endurance. We're not discarding them. We're just going to put them into our endurance. Okay, so we have decided that these two are going into there and these two are going into there. We do get those back randomly sometimes, depending on the uh, mob. Some of these mobs will give us back. We have put our first player token back over to our dwarf. So he is actually going to play all four to put down an axe. So now he has the ability to attack. He is going to tap to attack. He is going to attack one of these goblins in hope of getting rid of one. So he has to roll a 14 or less. He rolls a four. So basically he has wiped out the goblin, the first, first kill. We get a fate token, which can be used later to reroll uh, dice, uh, take an endurance, draw a card, those types of activities. So we have done the first damage to the uh, player. Whew. Wow. Okay, next up is our mage. Now she's going to do what? The mage is going to put down Wraith of Elements. And this is a spell. She can do one spell attack for three. As you know, it says a three to pay this and one to attack. So she too is going to attack. So she is going to roll her dice. And she needs a 16 or less. She rolled an eight. She does six plus one die six plus three. She's going after this particular monster. One plus, so she's going to do five damage to this monster. I don't believe he has a shield. No, so there is no shielding here. So off we go. Now the one thing that we didn't do is we were, I forgot that she does have a dodge. So when we dodge, we're going to use a three. So if we, we get three or less, she's going to use a, does uh, she'll be able to half her damage. That's a 10, so it didn't really affect anything. So that is that turn. That is our turns. We've done successful ta uh, attacks. We've gotten rid, rid of two. She too gets a fate, which is good. We are back to our monsters. We are back to our um, Cobalt. So he hopefully is not going to roll a 13. Five is a scolding. The hero with the most cards in their hand discards one randomly. Oh, we got three. We got three. So randomly phrase, one, three, five, two, four, six. We roll a two. So one of these cards randomly has got to be put into the discard pile right up there, which is too bad. That was kind of, these were the leggings. I kind of really wanted those. Oh, well. Now we're going to roll again. We roll a one, which is a success. Curse. Oh, a cobalt curse. The hero with the most endurance cards returns one of them to their hand. They're both at four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, uh, one, three, five, two, four, six. Two. He's going to have to return one of these to his hand. And that is the end of the turn. The first player marker, of course, is going to... Uh, Come back. I don't know if I did that correctly, but that's okay. We're going to tick down to the sixth turn. It, in reality, it really doesn't make that much difference to who goes first uh, in, in, a, in a solo play, really, for me. Um, okay. I'm missing a dice. There it is. So uh, the first turn would have been her second. So we're really back to, to our fire mage. Oh, I did that. I used that wrong. You moved the wrong token. We are going to tick down to our um, sixth turn. So that was a pretty good turn for us. We're going to pick two cards. And then we are going to decide to add what to the our endurance piles. Everything is going to get untapped, of course. And we are ready for the next round. So our fire mage has decided to put one down, which will give her five. And our dwarf is going to put two down for five. We are coming to play a uh, our fire mage's turn. Again, we are 
we have tapped we have ta untapped our mana and what th they're going to do here is um, for four she's going to put down a different weapon and we're going to get one d6 plus four one d6 plus three but the better chance is her fire so she's going to use her last one to use her wrath of elements needs a 17 or less she rolls a four and we will roll a 1d plus three oops that's a seven can roll a four she's going to attack our our bandit he doesn't have a dodge he does have one shield so he's going to she's going to do six damage against our bandit and that uses that and that is the end of her turn our dwarf he has five our dwarf is going to add uh use three to add his uh warfare which is going to add plus three to his attack basically so he needs a 17. He is then going to attack for uh, one using his trusty axe. So he has a 17 for melee. And he's going to do 1d plus 4 if he hits. 3, so he is going to hit. He is going after our pirate. Arr. So he is going to do uh, 1d plus 4. 5 is 9, minus the one, uh, the one shield is 8. So basically we're going to go uh, 5, we're going to have to return 2. So we've done a pretty good job here. Arr. With one left, actually with two, with one left, he is actually going to now try to guess again. As you know, he is a 14 on that particular test. He rolls a 4. We are down to now four. So we're doing okay. Not great, but uh, we're, do we're doing good. We're doing good. On misses, I forgot we're supposed to give fate tokens on misses too. Nobody's missed, so it's not a big deal at this point. So uh, again, just little rules. There's a lot of little rules to remember in this game, but all in all, it's, it, we're, we're good. We're not, we're not suffering at all here. We are back to our cobalt. We are going to roll, Mr. Cobalt. He rolls an, a nine. A nine says, Heat weapon. The hero with the most fate must select one of their weapons in play and put it back in their hand or lose two D6 heart. Oh, wow. The um, mage says, I'll, I'll take my weapon back into my hand. Now, there is a seven card limit. We haven't had to worry about that. Now, we're going to roll again. A 12, which is basically a healing spell. All heals all fellow warriors for five. All that hard work has just not paid off for us. Our orc is going to roll. Our orc is going to roll. He rolls an eight, which is a, a, a hero chosen by the group suffers 1d6 plus two. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, we've got a good, uh, a good dodge roll here. So, um, let's roll the damage first. So, 1d6 plus 2. So, he's 3. His dodge is 5. So, he rolls a d20. 5 or less will basically make him take 2 damage. So, he's only going to take 2 out of the 3 damage. 1, 2, 38. Not so terrible. Okay, we're going to roll for our pirate. Who wants a little revenge? 20. 20 is a critical failure. Normally they would run away, but because the leader is still here, he stays on the board. But that's what that it is. He would run away. But that's not what's going to happen here. But he does no damage. That's good. We tick down the 5. That is kind of unfortunate for us because arr, the next Hedgeman comes out. And it is... Bucanian Beachcomber. She has 15 health. 
Wow, you know when things go bad, they just they just go bad, you know. Uh, So we're gonna untap everything in the world here. We are now going to take our two cards. Pity that we lost that weapon, but it, it's not the for, uh, oops, not a face fate worse than worse than death. Okay, we're gonna make a decision on what we're gonna do for endurance. We are back, and our fire mage is getting rid of two for tin to endurance. Our dwarf is one. It is our dwarf's turn first. We do have that extra guy. So at this point, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven endurance. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six endurance. So um, there we go. So we are going to start with our dwarf. He is going to, uh, for three, put out his helmet. That should help give him a little protection. Next off, he is going to uh, attack. So he's going to attack for one. So he's going. To, he needs a 17. He's going to use his axe here, of course. He is going after our pirate here. 11. He hits. It's a D6 plus four. Let's roll high. He is going to lose one for the shield. Uh, a five. So he's going to take eight damage. One, two, three. He is down to two life, which is good. And that is that will be his turn for now. We are going to come over to our wonderful old wizard. The wizard is going to spend two of her endurance to put down a robe. The robe doesn't stop anything, but every time the robe she is attacked and loses uh, life, she will um, draw a card. And she's going to, for one, going to try to guess using her knowledge. So she needs a 14 or less. She rolls a 4. We are down to 3. So we're doing pretty good here. She is then going to spend 3 to add a magical lore, which basically takes her to magic 20. So basically, she doesn't even have to roll. Except roll, you have to roll because a one is a critical failure. If you roll a one, you're going to lose a card from your hand. If you roll a 20, which is a critical hit, you draw a card. We have one left, which is going to trigger our magical attack. So we do have to roll. So we're going to roll. And it's three, so we're going to hit, of course. And we do a 1d6 plus 3. And, of course, we're going over to our fighter there. So 8. He only needs 2. So he's basically dead, which is good. And that is the end of the turn. And we'll just move our endurance back to where we need to have. And we are back to our Cobalt's turn. The Cobalt rolls a 12, which is the uh, healing spell. Well, no, there's nobody to heal, so that's not a big deal. The second roll for him is a 15, which is shouting, and he laughs. So he does no damage. Our Orc... Hi, women. We are going to roll. Oh, almost lost that one. He rolls an 11, which is an attack. A hero chosen by the group suffers 1d6 too. So we're going to take the dwarf. A, because he has a high dodge roll, plus he has some protection there. So, so we're going to roll 1d6 plus 2. He rolls a 5, so that's 7. Our our dwarf's going to roll is a four, which is under his dodge. That gets rounded up to four. He's going to use his protection. He takes one damage. Not a problem. He's down to 37. Whew, a lot of work. A lot of dice chucking in this game. We are down to, we are going to do our next pirate. Arr, he rolls at 20. Flight. So he does nothing. So we got away pretty good with that. 
this turn. So we're going to now tick down to the fourth. Remember, at three, we're going to get another henchman. So we really want to get through it to start fighting this guy. So uh, we're going to untap our world here. Everything gets untapped. We are going to take two more cards. Once we run out of cards, we really don't have any more cards. And, you know, it's, it's pretty much as easy as that. And we just have to deal with what we got. Uh, hopefully we can get his name done pretty quickly here. We've got starting to get enough mana to do some stuff. So we're okay, really. So let's decide on whether or not we're going to put some endurance down. So we are back. We are shifting over to our mage who is not actually going to spend any endurance. She has eight, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what are we going to do for those eight? First thing we're going to do is we're going to put down our, our weapon for four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got a short bow at least now. Whoops. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then she's going to spend one to use her first spell. She has to roll d20, basically 20 or, or less, which isn't horrible. She rolls a 16. She's going to roll d4. She's going after um, both. Of them. It doesn't really matter who's going to do more damage. The, the pirate over here will do more damage. So she's going to roll 1d plus 3 is 7. He's got 1, so he's going to do 6 damage. And you might hear my dogs in the background. 1, 2, 3. Four. She does six damage, which is good. She's going to now test her knowledge to try to guess his name. She needs a 14 or less. We roll a one. Woohoo! The last one, she's going to use her archery skill to try to take out some more damage here. It is a 1d plus six if she attacks, but she only has an eight for ranged, so she has to roll an eight or less, and she rolls a two, wow, which is nice. And what did I say, that was a one D plus six. Well, there's a good opportunity here. Whoops, let's get it in the roll, three. So three plus four is seven, minus one is six. We are down to three life on this one, perfect. So that was a good, uh, a good turn for us, and because she, no, she didn't miss, nor did she kill anybody. No, so she doesn't get a faint token. We come back over to our trusty dwarf. He is going to spend three, one, two, three, to put Frenzy down. Frenzy is interesting because then we can spend three endurance to add three to our attack, which is nice. He's going to use one endurance to test his crafting so that he can see if he can remove the name. 20. No, he did not remove the name. That is a failure. Okay. We are going to then do a attack for one. And we're going to attack, I think because we have the frenzy, it'd be almost worth, yeah, no, we've, we've got to go after him. So we're going to go after him. It's not as good as going here, but I can't kill them all at once. So let's just go. We need a 17 or less. We roll a 13. We roll a dice of uh, 1d plus 4. 2 minus 1. So 1 plus 4 is 5. He is dead. So we do get another fate token. That is his second fate token. He should have two fate tokens. One. Two. There we are. I put it back by accident. There is nothing more he can do. He does not have another type of weapon. So that is the end of his turn. We come. That is the end of the turn, I guess. So we are now back to our cobalt. At least, at least we're getting to the point where it's not. Don't have so much attacking coming on. So the cobalt is going to roll. Oops. Let's just put that down here so you can see me roll. It rolls a eight. The 8 says Heat Weapon, 
here with the most famous select one of their weapons to play and put it back on their hand. Um, wow. Kind of hates to do it, but he, he's going to put it back in his hand. That's fine. He gets another attack. He's a 10. He's The 10 is uh, a healing spell. He's already healed up, so it doesn't do any effect. Our orc is going to roll a 7. Uh, a hero chosen by the group, which I'm going to choose our um, dwarf, of course. So he's going to roll a 1d plus 2, which is 3. He's going to roll his dodge. So if he rolls a 5 or less, he's good. He rolls a 3, so he's really only going to take 2 damage. Then he uses his protection for 3 damage. He takes no damage whatsoever. And that is the end of the monster's turn. It's unfortunate that we are going to tick down to uh, 3 turns to 3 because we have to add another henchman. In this case, we're adding an Orc Warrior who has 20 health. Phew, wow. Okay, it is time to untap everything. The Dwarf is going to go first once we untap everything. Though he did lose his weapon last turn, which is not very nice, but uh, we're okay, I think. I think we can do this in two turns. Okay, okay, everything has been untapped. We're going to pull two cards. And then we're going to make our endurance decision. Our dwarf decided he's going to put one into his pile and our mage is not going to put anything in. We are into our dwarf's turn. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Endurance. So the first thing that he is going to do for four, of course, is he's going to put his weapon back down. Next thing he's going to do is he's going to test his uh, crafting. So he needs a 14 or less. A 7. We are almost down. There we go. Now he's going to do an attack. So he's going to attack on his uh, with his trusty axe. He is going to attack the orc. Highwayman, he has a 3 shield. So we have a 17, which is an 8. So we're going to attack. We're going to, uh, it is a 1 die plus Three, I think it was four. It's high. So a six plus four is ten. He has three shield. So he's only going to take seven damage. He is going to spend his uh, three plus this to give him three more, so he can actually use his frenzy to give him ten damage. So that's pretty nice. And that is. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be the end of his turn. So I think... Oh, it is the end of his turn. Okay, that is that. I was hoping for something else, but I, I, I should have done something in a different order. But that's the way it goes. We are over to our Fire Maid. Who, who the first thing she is going to do is try to guess the name. 14 or left for her knowledge. She's going to guess. And she just guess and she says, Rumpelstiltskin! And he goes, oh, 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 and he turns himself over. So he has three times the number of party for hit points. So he only has a six hit points. So that's pretty modest. And now we can now do some damage. The first thing she's going to do is cast a spell. And she is going to, for two, cast Invictio Minor. So she's going to have to do a magic attack which he hasn't done yet, and it's just going to do straight out seven damage. He has no shielding. So one, two. So basically she just has to roll the dice, and really doesn't matter. Uh, Fourteen. It works. She has seven damage to this guy. He has no dodge roll. He doesn't have any shielding. Oh, he has a dodge roll of eight. Oh, okay. So he has to roll a, a, if he gets eight or less, he's going to half the damage. He rolls a six. So we're going to wind up only taking three damage here. Oh, that's a pity. One. So we're not going to get him this turn. Three. She's now going to, he's already used the magic attack. She's going to use her uh, bow. She has to roll an eight or less though, which is 
you know, pretty hard. 14, swish. So um, she used up another endurance. There's nothing more she can do, I don't think. We have one, two, three endurance left. Ah, she can. So she's going to spend one. Oh, she's already... Nope, it's not a spell. It is a card that I can use at any point. It is suffocation. So if I, I spend the two endurance, and we can lose two hit points right here. Bang, bang. And that is that for her turn. It is the end. Uh, there, we are going to go to our Kobol's turn, who is now going to roll some dice. He has one hit point left. He rolls a three, which says Kobol Scolding. The here with the most cards in the hand must discard a card randomly. I have two. I have four. So we're going to randomly discard a card. There we go. Gets the roll again. It is an 18, which says nothing. Then we're going to do our highwayman. He rolls a 13, nothing. Shouts an orc curse. We have our orc warrior, who rolls a 12, which is nothing. He twirls his two-handed hammer. So we got away good. We are down to our second turn. Do, 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 do. There we are. Two turns. We are going to untap everything. Do, 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 do. I think we are getting down to the point where I think we're going to be able to hopefully maybe win this game in the next little bit. We are going to take two cards. We are going to move this over. I've got to finish up here soon. I think we're pretty close to the end. Should have put two, these two cards into my hand, not into the endurance piles. <laughs> wow, this is what happens when you start, uh, you know, having to wind down and, and start to worry about trying to get stuff, to get some stuff done. It is her turn. We have to decide whether or not we're going to put any uh, any uh, stock into what they're going to do. Okay, so uh, not going to put any endurance here. He's going to put one here. Now we're going to go back to her turn. So first of all, she is going to actually use her um, magic ability. So she's going to roll her basically anything other than a one. She, she's going to hit. She's going to roll a one die. Uh, he, he does get a chance to dodge, but minimally he's going to do one. He's going to take one damage because you always round up five. Five plus uh, three is eight. Uh, dodge, he's still going to, most he's going to do is four. He has no shielding. He is dead. We have killed our Kobol leader. So that was our first. Our second will be to cast a spell. And we're going to cast for zero. Play this card before a uh, melee or ranged. And we can actually take the magic attribute. So we're going to put that up here. Our magic is 20. So, so we're going to now fire our bow with a 20. So we'll have to use another endurance. 13 we're going to hit. We're going to do one die six on this particular monster. One die six plus four. So basically, he, he does have an armor of a three. Whew. So he has five, nine minus three is uh, six. He's got five left. He is dead. And she gets that last final fate token. That is the end of her turn. We're going to come over to our... Wily Dwarf here. So, uh, for the first thing he's going to do, he's going to play three. One, two, three. To play a crossbow. Then he's going to spend another action to use his melee weapon. So he needs a 17 to hit. Which is a nine. So he is going to hit our orc who has a three damage. So he's got a one die plus four, but he's going to also spend one, two, three to add the endurance. What did I say? One die plus four is nine. Uh, he has a dodge roll of nothing, so he can't dodge. He's going to nine plus three is going to take 12 damage right off. So that leaves him at eight. One, two... 
Then he's going to use his crossbow for one. It's a 1d6. His range is a 10, though, so he, there's a chance he will miss. And nope, he rolled an 8. And he is going to roll a uh, one die for three. Uh, but he does have a three armor, so let's hope for something high. A four plus three is seven, minus three is four. So he is down to four life, but we weren't able to kill him. Which is kind of unfortunate. And there we are. So it is his turn. He's going to come over to here. And then let's just uh, roll a dice for our orc highwayman. He rolls a 13, and I believe that just means he just stomps his feet. Yeah, he just stomps his feet. Uh, we took down the, the first turn. Unfortunately, we're going to get another henchman. Hopefully, it's not something too disgusting. Oh, another orc warrior with a 20. I think after, once they hit zero, they get double actions. But we should be able to take them out for the most part, or, or pretty close to taking them out, I would think. So we're going to ready everything. We're going to move our adventure token back to our back to our dwarf. We're going to write our endurance. Take two cards. And away we go. So uh, he's going to add two, as well as the dwarf's going to add two. The dwarf is going to go first. The dwarf is going to actually use one to use a throwing axe, and it's a test of range, but it does not use an attack. So his range is 10. He could do three if he hits. Four, he hits. It's a range of 10. One, two, and three, which is excellent. We are good. Let's see what else we can do here. Okay, then we're going to just start going through this using his trusty axe. He is going to attack our warrior here. He has a 17 or less. We roll a 17, which is good. We're going to roll a one die plus three, no, four, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to hope for something high is five. So what is nine? I'm going to add, I'm going to add my frenzy. One, two, three. I don't think he has a dodge roll. He does not have a dodge roll. So uh, basically it's a nine on him. So we are down to 11. And that takes care of that. Then he's going to use his crossbow. And he's going to use his crossbow on the uh, Orc Highwayman. And he has to use, a, of course, an endurance. It's a die three, but he only has a 10. So he has to roll a 10 or less. He rolls a, what looks like a four. It was a four till it turned over. So he hits. So it's a one die plus three, I believe. Yep. One, three, four, three. So he does one damage. That's pretty much par for the course for me. Um, he has endurance, but he has nothing else to spend. So that is the end of his turn. Actually, you know what? He's going to use a fate token. And he's going to use a reroll. So um, let's see what we can get here. Whoops. We'll use officially inside two. Oh, well, he loses one more. That's a pity. I should have left the six. But, you know, hey. Okay, we are, are done here. We're coming over to our, our mage. First thing she's going to do, she's going to spend four endurance for Invocatio Major. That's a 12 damage. So basically, she can't lose. One, two, three, four, 12 damage. She's going to attack that orc for three. Uh, even if he loses three, it's not. He's gone. As you know, we only have one left on this orc. He is going to use. She is going to use her uh, elements. Basically, she just has to roll and does uh, eight, which is less. It's six damage, one damage, gone. That is the end of the game. We have defeated just in time. We're down next turn would have been zero. And we have completed the game just in time. So we're going to do some final thoughts in a minute and uh, clean up. Final thoughts for Aventuria, an adventure card game. I liked it. 
Um, I always enjoy playing Magic, and, and I, I sold my collection years ago. This gives me a really good Magic, uh, kind of a Magic feel, but with a little bit of uh, a story or narrative, which is kind of fun. Not pretty light. It's a, it's a lightweight game. I, it's maybe a little bit more than a filler, but not much more than a filler. It's a really good, maybe nice little gateway, perhaps, or perhaps a very light medium. Nah, no, I'm going with a gateway. So this is a gateway game, I think. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the complexity is particularly very high here, though the rules could have been written a little bit better. But there was, there's some good videos out there, and hopefully including this one eventually. Uh, Component-wise, perfectly fine. Uh, what you would expect in a box for about 50 bucks. Um, Component-wise, I, I do wish the mat that they gave for the fight, which you don't need if you wanted to save table space. Uh should be mounted, but okay, we can forgive them for that. Uh, the game played in about an hour, despite me stopping starting. I don't really look, I'd never looked at the rules. Uh, so the rule set basically is all on the cards once you get playing. It's a pretty simple game. You start your adventure, go through the narrative, and then start your boss fights. Do what the, do what the clues do. Very Arkham Horror-ish by taking clues off, or adding, not really adding clues, or but taking clues off to get to the point where I can turn him over. And he was only a six, so I mean, it's not like, zap, you're dead. Uh, he is a kobold. And then killing the other two monsters. So, and I did it uh, before the uh, end of the clock. Now, the game doesn't end when it ticks to zero. Just what happens is your henchmen start getting double turns. And you can see a, a lot of the time it's, oh, they rattle their sword or uh, give a curse or something. So, um not a big problem. Um, you could play it on the harder mode, which gives you less time. Uh, I never felt particular pressure that anything was going to be out of control. Uh, once we, and that has to do with cards too. So there's a little randomness, of course. So it's you know it's in a typical American style game. So there's a lot of randomness in cards, a lot of randomness in dice. But all in all, I don't mind that style of game. I would rate this high. Uh, I would encourage you to see if you can find it. I. The base game is still around. Some of the expansions are hard to get. This is from 2016. I had to go to Noble Knights to get most of what I wanted. And I have one expansion coming from England. It was the only place that had that one expansion. Uh, but all in all, I'm going to give this a, a pretty high rating in terms of take a look if you can find it and enjoy it like I did. So this is Harry Jacobs. My name, I am the North of 60 Gamer. If you like what you saw, subscribe or like if you subscribe if you want to hear more of this stuff hit the bell and join me more often i do regular postings both here and in everything board games i hang around in a number of different spots if you want to touch base and say hi pm me say hi uh everything board games uh board game revolution board games for run solo board gamers for solo board gamers and among a few others i think i just joined black rose rebirth uh, the other day, uh, Dungeons of Infinity. So I am around. Ask questions. If you have any comments to, uh, or you want me to do something specific, let me know. I am signing off now. Goodbye.